Welcome to Documentary First, an inside look at a first-time filmmaker's journey. I'm your host, Josh Lindsay, from the Movie Proposal Podcast. And with me is our first-time filmmaker, Christian Taylor. Hey, Josh Lindsay. Hello. And with us, as always, is Jason. Hey there. (laughs) (laughs) So we're starting over. You're losing things now. (laughs) I don't even have a last name. He's a guy (laughs) sitting over there. I'm just going to be Jay by the end of this. (laughs) He's going to be Jay. But he is is crucial to this, so we are glad that he is here. Yes, he is. I really appreciate everything you do, Jason. I'm glad to be here. So last time we talked, we uh, Christian came back from Tennessee, was working virtually with her editor, Bill, uh, using all types of new tools and learning how to operate – with different people, different tools, and so forth. And today we want to dive into the music side. Because when you came in today, the first thing you said was, I was listening to the music, watching part of the film, just crying. So you're crying to the yeah. old, your own movie. But really, I'm sure it was, you know, the music must be just powerful. Well, I just want to give a shout out to our incredible, Incredible composer. Um, his name is Jeff Kurtnacker, and he is from LA. And he uh, has scored video games. Um, but you know, video games are becoming more like feature films. You know, they want these big, robust scores. Um, but he'd always had a dream to score a film. And I, I think I've mentioned this before on earlier podcasts. But a lot of our podcasts, um, I mean, a lot of our help on this film have come from the Holy Post podcast volunteers. And Jeff was one of those. And he, his wife, Jenna, said, you know, she's asking for uh, volunteers. You should, you know, reach out to her. And he's wow. like, oh, I'll never hear from her. You know? <laughs> so he reached out to me and I happened to be in Las Vegas at the time. This was last April and I was at NAB. And uh, I was like, hey, I'd love to talk to you. By the way, I'm in Las Vegas. Do you want to come over? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he was like, uh, sure. <laughs> and he got in his car and drove four hours to have dinner with me and my team. And we talked, we met him, and we loved him. And we're like, you're hired. And he drove the four hours back home that night. Wow. And to like two or something in the morning. And you know, it's one of those stories where he was like, do I take this risk? Do I do this? I mean, this is really crazy. Do I do it? And the fact that he did do it was huge, you know, and we sort of felt, at least I did, buy-in, like, oh, dude, this guy really sacrificed. He must really want to help us out. And then I listened to his stuff, jeffkurtnacker.com, and he has this incredible score, and he's there conducting an orchestra. And I was like, ooh, dude, I want this guy, <laughs> right? Um yeah, so so that began our partnership. That was last April. And then, you know, we just kind of talked about, you know, this vision, wouldn't it be great if we could have a French orchestra score it and, you know, or all this stuff, play it. And um, not much happened, but the next thing that happened is he said, hey, do you think if I, pl- if I pay my own way, I could come to Normandy? And this was, when was this? This was last, well, we went over last May. So, I mean, maybe like, you know, a few weeks later, he's like, I really think I would do a lot better if I could come over and see it and hear it and touch it. And um, so with the help of his parents, he came over and he was there and he's like, you know, I really have this great vision of playing an organ in one of these old churches. And in St. Marie du Mont, there's a thousand year old church there. It's actually was built over the course of several um, centuries. So you've got, you know, Greco and then you've got Roman and then you've got, you know, I don't know, all this different architecture over. I mean, it's like 1100 years old. Wow. And um, it was, uh, it's beautiful. And they have an incredible organ in there. And so, of course, the town, which rolled out the red carpet for us, was like, sure. (laughs) So he got to um, play and record in this um, beautiful church. And he got to listen to French bands and walk on the beaches. And uh, he said it was very inspirational for sort of the ideas that he was playing around with. And so then we said goodbye. And then over the course of time, he would sort of send me some samples and we would communicate about you know, what we felt like. And, And I have to tell you, I was at a loss. Like, 
I had no idea how to talk to a composer. How do you talk to a composer? Right, right. It's a whole, I mean, it, I don't even know. I did not even know. I did not know the first thing about what I should say to him. What do I like? What do I not like? How do I tell you what I like and don't like? Just make it sound good and inspirational, right? Go do it. <laughs> right. But then he would send me something, and then I would realize I had an opinion. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound quite right. Anyway, it took us a few back and forth. I'll never forget. The funniest thing that happened was he wrote something, and I didn't like it. And uh, he wrote me back this snarky email, which was like, well, maybe I'm not the right guy for you. <laughs> you know, I don't know what it was, but I was like, no, 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 you are the guy. You are the one. You are not going anywhere. You're scoring this. And he wrote back later. He's like, I'm so sorry for being a moody composer. That was a terrible email. <laughs> but I don't know what was happening in his life at the time. But, you know, he just felt like he want, wanted to please, and he wasn't connecting, I don't think. And I didn't know how to communicate. So I'll tell you the key. What I finally learned over time, at least to communicate with this composer, is that you don't need to communicate with them in, I want this instrument necessarily, or this note here, or you need to talk to them primarily about emotion. And he and I were talking about this the other day because sometimes he'll send me something and it may sound good and I may like it. But it does nothing in my emotions. Mm -hmm. But then he'll send me something, and all of a sudden, like, emotion comes from somewhere. And I realize, like, music is so interesting. It's this weird combination of, of science, art, and psychology. Hmm. And somehow, you know, we're made to be receivers of this, and it carries – thoughts and emotions and stuff. And I think it's more divine than anything else mm -hmm. because um, it truly is. There's math involved, science involved, art and emotion, psychology involved. And a, a good composer understands all of that. And he understands, uh, you know, there's specific science for how, what notes do things in our emotions. And, um, so he was not confident of his ability to score a whole film because he'd never done it. He's like, I think I can do it. I'd done small things. But a film is a totally different beast because it's a long form and you've got, you've got to think in a long arc. So you've got to think about the whole overarching theme of the story right. and come up with some big themes. And then you have to think about the individual stories and then – there's the question of how much do you score? When do you stop the music? How do you use it for emphasis? Right. So where are you in the process right now? Like, uh, is, is the whole thing scored? Is he done? I mean, I, today, when I watched, I was sitting in my office and he asked me to watch sort of the ending stuff that he had scored. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting in there and all of a sudden, like, I just start, you know, like, like I can't really breathe. And all, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Emo you know, and I just started crying. And then it just belt. And I was just sobbing. I, wow. I had to call him. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is incredible. <laughs> and um, that was the last final review. I mean, I had I over the course of the days have given him some review on some of the big scenes. Like there's this one scene where we have this veteran who has never been to Normandy and he's going for his first time and he's really apprehensive. Um, and then he gets there and he meets the people of Normandy and he sees all the things they do for veterans. And he's just like, oh my gosh, do you believe this? And when he said that, he is standing on this drop zone where they did these um, parachute drops. The Army actually sent guys over. And this year they jumped with German, Romanian, American, British soldiers all did a commemorative jump together. Mm. And um, – so we began showing this huge field where guys originally landed, but now, you know, they're doing this commemorative jump. And we show the crowds and we show people watching. And uh, and he just scored this incredible thing. And I was watching, you know, and I had asked him to revise it like two or three times and it wasn't quite right. And But I watched it today and I was like, 
holy cow, he totally nailed it. <laughs> and I wrote him back. I'm like, you killed it. This is, I'm like, this is incredible. And he's like, oh, by the way, did you watch the ending? And so I'm like, I'll go watch the ending. I was just toast after that. I mean, <laughs> because we have this like ashes scattering memorial scene on yeah. Utah Beach. And then that goes right into our ending. Um, and so now the movie is completely scored. And you know what? This is what I feel so bad about. He, I didn't know if he was going to have enough time. I mean, think about this. Originally scoring a whole two-hour movie by yourself. By yourself. And I was like so worried he wasn't going to have time. So I was like, dear Lord, please let Jeff have time to score this film. Please let him have no distractions. Not long after I prayed that prayer, I get a call from him telling me that he ruptured his Achilles tendon and had to have surgery and was going to be in bed for the next, I don't know how many weeks. And I was like, Lord, that is not what I meant. That is not what I meant. I feel terrible. So he has been lying in bed with headphones on, not even in his office, scoring this. It's just beyond my comprehension. And like, we'll say, hey, can you make this five seconds longer? After he's created this beautiful piece of music, right. he's like, sure, no problem. I'm like, <laughs> sure, no problem. Like, how do you do this? And everybody that has, I'm like, dude, you may have never scored a movie before, but you are going to be busy after this because wow. it's just so great. And he hasn't even, like, it's all done with, like, electronics. Well, that's what I was going to ask because traditionally when you see the behind the scenes and they show the scoring part, there's an orchestra and so forth. So how— and I've heard part of it. And I was, I had heard there was a volunteer composer. So my expectations just went down a notch, you know, like, okay, well, you know, whatever, right? You know, still probably be good, you know. But I was blown away too from the scenes that I saw. Like, wow, this, I can't believe you found this guy who volunteered. He was a gift of God. <laughs> I didn't find him. He was a gift of God. He found me. So, but- yeah. So, yeah, so it's all – describe that. Like we're, well, so this guy, you know, not only does he know and understand music, but he plays instruments. He plays piano. He plays guitar. He plays, you know, different things and drums. And so he's – you know, our vision was to have an orchestra. And actually, that is still the vision. Like, we want to have an orchestra score it. Mm. But that is expensive, and it's expensive to rent the studio time, and we don't have that right now. But – so he does whatever he can. So he will compose it um, electronically, and then he'll add in real instruments, whether he'll play it or um, he's had someone sing, um, you know, and again, they're donating their time. Um, and some the first passes he'll send us are pretty synthy, and they sound like they're done electronically, but somehow he changes them. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> mystery of electronics, I don't know. Um, and they begin to sound more rich and hmm. more real. And any musician will tell you, yes, I know that's not. Like, you then add the real instruments, and it changes everything. Hmm. Like, it sounds great now, but if we were to record it in a studio with, right. you know, <laughs> Forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to um, mention, if you're a, a fan of learning about these things, uh, I mentioned two podcasts to listen to. One of them is Blockbuster, where they – it's the story of Spielberg and Lucas, and how they're making their films. But John Williams plays a key role in this. Mm. And you really should listen to this, Christian, because – Everything is going wrong, especially with Lucas and Star Wars. I mean, it is a disaster. He had a screening with Spielberg, Brian De Palma, uh, a couple other big wigs, and they hated it, except for Spielberg. But and of course, he felt just awful and crushed his dream. But it wasn't until the music got in the film they said this is the best part of the movie and even me listening to this podcast and and then hearing the music is when it, you get those chills and so like right. the music does play an enormous role in film it does the other podcast and Jason I need your help on this one what was the podcast you recommended uh the soundtrack show the soundtrack show that guy dives into the art and science and math and like why what was created was created for a film and so and he does this really interesting thing where it's like he, he'll show you like, you know, Jaws. Like you think of the very, you know, standard, you know, but but He'll talk about that for part of an episode and then he'll go into why all the score around it supports that. Hmm. And he'll break down 
how great that score is. And he's like, you probably didn't even notice that it sounds like this. Right. But this is what it sounds like. And just go into how it's actually a pirate story. Jaws is a, is a story about pirates, and they're scored like they're pirates. Hmm. And it just sounds like they're dancing around when you listen to the music on its own. But it's, you know, a horror movie about a right. shark attacking and eating right. people. And so it's just, it's really interesting. It's a great podcast to listen that to. That does sound great. Yeah. I just never, I mean, working with this composer has opened my eyes to A, the importance of music, B, the complexity of music, you know, how you talk to composers. And just, it's just an untapped, I think, story of, I, th- I wish people understood them more and the importance of music and film. So I thank you for those recommendations. Well, great. Well, why don't we end here? Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. Yeah. Uh, oh, and everybody, go to normandystories.com. We would love for you to donate because we really need to pay our composer at some point. <laughs> uh, and uh, also, there's um, there's new blogs that are out. Those are incredible to read. Uh, if you do make a $25 donation or more, you'll be able to get to see a screening of the film. And comment on it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we'd love their feedback because that will help us make it better. Okay. Well, hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to Documentary First, where we believe everyone has a story to tell, and you can be the one to tell it. Amen. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.